are listening to the 10 Questions with the Musical Mind podcast with your host, Peter Harris. Hey everybody, welcome back to the 10 Questions with the Musical Mind podcast. This is Peter Harris here, your host. This week, I'm happy to bring aboard the program the one and only Gretchen Men. Gretchen, of course, is a very talented guitar player um, as a founding member of the Led Zeppelin tribute band Zepparella. She tours the country as well as her own solo material, such as Hail Souls and 2016's Abandon All Hope, which is a fantastic and ambitious concept album. Um, So Gretchen joins us here today, and we talk about everything from her early days getting started, um, her classical guitar training, to who would make the coolest rock star World War II fighter pilot. We cover a lot of random ground here. But anyway, so I hope you enjoy this conversation with Gretchen Men. Hey, Gretchen, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. My pleasure on, on my end. Uh, you know, I've got several questions for you. Um, one of the things I've wondered about was, you know, I know that you studied classical guitar and from actually a student of Segovia himself. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, Philip Defremery. That's mm-hmm. pretty up there as far as classical guitar pedigrees go. Yeah. <laughs> um, Indeed. What was it a transition for you as you progress as a guitar player, getting away from those techniques and or you know incorporating new techniques into your playing? Like, would it even be possible for you at this time to go back and record a purely classical guitar album? Like, would would a Christopher Parkerding be like, she's not using the rest stroke correctly? I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's a, such a. Mm-mm. Well, um, no, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I'm sure Christopher Parkinson can find a lot wrong with my classical <laughs> playing. <laughs> um, but no, I do try to keep keep up the classical playing, although I haven't. Um, it's funny you mentioned it because actually last night I was I was falling asleep. I was like, I need to play more classical. Um, I, I consider it, um, you can lose your chops with anything, but sure. I had such diligence instruction. My teacher was so fantastic that um, though I don't have a huge extensive vocabulary, I'm by no means a professional level uh, classical guitar player. The training that I've had was very good. And so he instilled, I think, good habits during the time that we we had together. And so, um, of course, there's so much room to grow. And it's any, any, you could pick one tiny subset of a genre and it could still be an endless path right. towards mastery. Um so yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty that um, any professional classical player could hear is um, not professional in my playing, um, but but I I am confident the instruction that I had was very good. Yeah, so, I think it's the thing. It's it's a personal journey for everybody, and so if that gave you a solid foundation, and obviously you've expanded in the areas that interested you, so that's there's not a wrong yeah. answer. It's it's just what where did you end up yeah. going? Yeah, well, and actually, I think more than anything is I find a lot of applications for certain principles of classical guitar within other styles of playing as well. Um, uh, the rest stroke, like you mentioned, is great in fingerstyle playing sure. as well. I, I would imagine most fingerstyle players use it as well to bring out different voices for different tone variety. Mm-hmm. Um, also on uh, on electric guitar, I have pieces that I've written for just solo electric, and I'm yeah, I'm using rest strokes to you know, bring out voices in different ways. And um, so there's a lot that I think is applicable between yeah. the genres, yeah. And you probably don't even realize it at first, do you? Um, sometimes uh, sometimes it's conscious, sometimes it's not. You know, right. it just works its way in in different ways. And sometimes you do use it as a very clear, like, I want to bring out this bass line more, therefore I'm going to implement, you know, these rest strokes or whatever. And other times it's more like your ears want to hear it, your fingers do it, and then you're like, oh, yeah, I guess I am using a rest stroke there. Right, right. That's what I'm, yeah, a lot of times you yeah. just do things, you're like, oh, I did do that there. And Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So lately, you just came off the road. You've been playing dates with uh, with Neely and uh, Neely Brosh and, and Jennifer Batten. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. How was that arranged? Like, did you know Jennifer Pryor, or did you um, 
I mean, how was that all orchestrated to get the three of you together? Uh, of course, I knew who Jennifer was um, mm -hmm. when I was just yeah. just getting interested in guitar. It's like you know, she's the the godmother of you know of, of electric guitar for right. pretty much every subsequent generation. Uh, of course, now that we have the ability to more uh, effectively and quickly research other other you know other great examples, you know Memphis Minnie or you know Sister Rosetta Tharp or you know right. you know women who are ripping it up in prior generations, Jennifer was the one who was on the cover of Guitar Player magazine. You know, she sure. was the one who was on a lot of people's radars. So I certainly knew who she was. And then I think somehow we connected online. I think I wrote her like a fangirl message when I first started playing. Um, I think I wrote her like on Facebook um, and asked for some of her advice. Um, I've been playing longer than Facebook existed, but I think er early on in my journey. Yeah. And, um, and since then we did a uh, like a podcast together okay. uh, with it was her and Neely Rosh and me and Yvette Young and um, a, a number of other another um, of, of, of other female guitar players and Neely and I've been friends for uh, a while now mm -hmm. just because so you get there aren't since there there are still fewer female than male guitar players you get kind of lumped together as a group you right. know which uh, you know you could see it as a you could see it as anything it could be positive it could be negative it could be neutral whatever the way I see it is that it is what it is and now I have more friends so uh, Neely's phenomenal player uh, she's genuinely one of my dearest friends um, and we talked about trying to do some dates together for a long time and this was the year and we thought okay should we do it just the two of us and you know instrumental original music is you know it's hard to get people out to clubs to do it and to make it work out. And we thought, okay, let's put a third person on here. And we thought, well, first choice would be Jennifer Batten if she right. would do it. So we wrote her an imploring email and she was like, <laughs> sure. That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. She was one of the first ones. I mean, of course there was, you know, there was, you know, you know, heart and you had, you had your female guitar players before sure. that and all that, but she was one of the first ones that came along that was like a, I hate to use the word, but the quote unquote like shred tapping monster. And yeah. in in the role of Michael Jackson's guitar player, she was filling the shoes of people like Eddie Van Halen and Steve Stevens. And she was one of the first women from that guitar heavy, mm. uh, yeah, I get, what do you call it? Uh, niche that was really like, this one is just, you know, this will, she'll slay you. And yeah. It was, yeah. Definitely no, no further qualifications. She is a phenomenal guitar player by right. any standard. Right, right. So that was that's. I thought that was a cool pairing the three. And I've interviewed Neely before, and uh, before that happens, and uh, I've really enjoyed her playing. So it was, it She's was cool. Great. Good talking to her. Yeah. The um, now I admittedly have got a question for you. I don't know your whole backstory. I've you know of course done some digging, um, but in an old interview I saw. Unless I'm getting this wrong, let me know. Uh, it said you mentioned that one of your sunburst guitars was given to you by Ernie and Sterling Ball. Is that right? Oh, the, my very first guitar. It was a blue burst. Okay. Um, and you can see it in the video that I did for Valentino's Victory Lap. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, An another guitar. But let me just yeah. interact. What, what's the connection there? Because when I started playing. Yeah. At no point did Leo Fender come by my house go, here, kid, here's a Stratocaster. <laughs> right, exactly. How did that happen? We heard that you started playing guitar. <laughs> right. Um, uh, okay, so the story is that um, when, uh, well, before I was born and when I was very young, my dad was at Guitar Player Magazine. Okay. And, and he had started a column called What's in a Name? And he profiled different people. And his first profile was Ernie Ball. And... As a result of that, he developed sort of a friendship with the Ball family. So when I was nine years old, I remember going down and like meeting Ernie Ball's grandkids, you know, and um, and my dad is friends with some of, you know, Ernie Ball's children, you know, Sterling gotcha. and David and Nova. Um, so I they, we grew up as like friends of the family, not like hang out all the time because they were down in San Luis Obispo, but you know, we would, we, we knew the family. Sure. And so, um, when I got interested in guitar, they took me around the factory and they were being very sweet to me. And I was like 
thinking like I'd saved a bunch of money and I wanted a Steve Morse model because he was like my yeah. my guy. And they were like, uh, you kind of need a degree in electrical engineering to figure that out. You know, even just how to figure out how to use the pickups. There's like 17 different combinations for pickups. And they were like, you know, you'd do better off with a silhouette. And I was like, no, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> whatever, you know. And so they took me around the factory and they showed me different things. And there was this really beautiful blue burst silhouette. And uh, later that night, we were staying down at, uh, at David Ball's house. So he's one of Ernie's sons. And we were staying down there and we got a, I got a call. And they were like, oh, hey, you know, Sterling wants to talk to you. And I was like, okay. And so he's like, okay. And Sterling said, okay, I talked to Ernie and we want to give you the guitar. And I was waiting for the price because I, I, I think, you know, they had sort of made it. They'd implied that as a friend of the family, they'd get me the friends and family discount, sure. you know, which was going to be super cool, you know, but I still knew that they were higher end guitars and, you know, I'd been squirreling away my money. And so I was waiting for the end of the sentence, like we're going to give you the guitar for X right. number of dollars. But then I realized the sentence was like done. And I was like, wait. Right. And and I kind of I just like couldn't breathe for a second. I was like, wait, what what do you